Good day everybody, Sebastian Keynes here with another Watch Our Runs video. A, in this video we're going to discuss the upcoming fusion going on this uh, that's going to start this weekend in both the Forerunner and the public servers account. I'm actually going to have an opportunity to get Crodor in the in the free-to-play account. I missed him the first time at, for six months ago and primarily it was because I was just pushing my global account so hard and um i i completely ignored the forerunner server account but i am back in here and i'm trying to manage both uh as much as i can but i'm like i'm actually gonna get the opportunity to uh get him and add him into the account and not only that that some of my uh uh, guildmates who already have Crowler are going to have the opportunity to A1 him by getting an extra copy of him. So we're looking forward to that. And as I saw it on the calendar, uh, let me see if I can pull it up here really quick. As I sat on the counter, and I hope that they do copy this in both the public and the Forerunner server, one of the first things that jumped at me right away, guess what? There are 19 events. 19 events to get 16 copies of a rare and there are only three summoning events so if we plan everything if we manage our resources correctly we should be able to head and get him without summoning that's right so one of the things that i will advise you is look at the calendar and make sure you can double dip wherever accordingly so if you see a brave conquest event coming up make sure that that's when you run your amr you run your gr2 your gr3 your gr1 that's what you want to double dip then the strain of trying to get energy or diamonds to try to get this uh, uh, events completed is going to be lessened for you not only that we are getting awakening of heroes events so all these leveling that we have to do guess where those points are coming from from here so get your rares save them when the time comes Pop it, well, go ahead and level them up. Get them to get them to 40, then get the uh, epics to 50, and try to optimize there the awakening of heroes here. And the what's the other one? The corridor glory here. Yeah, so you can double dip there, and then we have the awakening heroes here on each one of these sets. Some of you are going to summon because there are going to be new heroes being introduced into the into the game. I know this weekend here. We're in the Forerunner server, we're having Edith, uh, Defender, being introduced. In the public server, Trusk is going to be introduced. So people are going to want to summon. For my instances, I'm actually thinking about bypassing because I want to save as many crystals as I can to possibly uh, then uh, double uh, uh, use them for the arrival of heroes here or just go ahead and get as many as I can for the Spirit of Altar just in case I miss one of the rares here, okay? But my goal is going to try to see if in any way, shape, or form, I can get 16 copies of the rare we have without having to summon. Now, why am I making this video? A lot of this, you probably already know, especially if you played a game like Raid Shadow Legends, because that's all we did, right? It, it, those that we played. It was all about waiting. And we knew there was a fusion coming at some point, so we would save resources. We were actually told about this, that Crudo was coming about the end of February, so we've had a chance to accumulate some resources. And that's actually what I did in my Forerunner server account and the free-to-play account. I started stacking up some resources. So I have some energy pots. I have some uh, some gold already saved up. Let me see here. Uh, this is the, the free-to-play account. So here, I'm already at 70 million gold. I've been kind of holding it, just making sure that I have it for the two tails of the of dismissed events that I have. I do have some diamonds. I'm not planning on blowing them. Uh, on summons unless i really need to and i'm always coming in here trying to get the energy pots make sure that i have all those available to me and i'm trying to always come in here looking for them and make sure that i have those but knowing how i play the game knowing how easily accessible it is to get the rewards right here uh this year is uh from farming a little bit so you can see 3750 i really don't think that they're going to put the the rare all the way to the end here it might be in a 1650 to 2300 scale uh right here in in this in this end here let me see if i can go yeah so right here that's where i would expect it this is where it was in the forerunner so in the in the first event the first time that this fusion rolled out yeah, my understanding was uh, correctly uh like i said i missed it but it was somewhat laid out like this uh, but there weren't as many events available. And 
according to some of the forerunner people that I have spoken to, they actually told me that one of the epics was actually buried in one of the Brave Conquest events. So it actually eased up in the fusion a little bit. I don't think they'll do that on this one because they are giving us 19 events to get 16 copies of a rare. So uh, there is no reason to believe that you cannot do this free to play. If you're a low spender, you know, you're going to get pro probably get some um, some um, rare crystals. You get the $30 pack. You do a little bit of summoning. You get some diamonds back. There's some energy there. You continue summoning. Eventually, you're going to get some. And if you do a summoning event, you're just going to relieve that stress of having to worry about completing one of these events. You probably can skip a Tales of the Smith or something like that. They're giving you flexibility. So, contrary to a video that somebody sent to me because they knew they were going to hook me with it, was that somebody was already crying about the fact that somebody that Moontan released a fusion like this, and they went on and compared it to Raid Shadow Legends. That is what Raid Shadow Legends is all about. It's just fusions like this every freaking two months so i don't know what the gripe was about they were saying oh they're getting greedier dude 19 events to get 16 copies of a rare does plarium do that no they don't they will single-handedly only release 16 events and then make sure that you summon up your butt to get the fragments or the rares or the epic that you're going to need to fuse into a legendary they're giving you flexibility here so don't listen to the fear mongering that is going on with other content creators saying that this is all just a money grab it isn't look at the calendar study carefully manage your resources well you should be able to get this guy free to play i know in my forerunner account i am set up to get him and i know i can do it free to play but that is because we got a heads up since uh, the end of February that this was going to be happening again. And not only that, I, I think that a lot of this got buried with the excitement of the Artemis uh, being introduced into the public server. But once we knew that he was coming, it was just time to make sure that we had resources accrued and that we were ready to accrue them. Make sure you do the guild bus because if you can hit and then uh, get the top chest, from Nightmare 3, Nightmare 4, you might get 200 diamond drops. You convert that into energy. I'm willing to bet that you'll get the fragments from those diamonds. You get the fragments from a couple events here. And the game is generous enough in giving you crystals to summon wherever you need to. Okay? So, just it's a little bit of resource management. There's no reason to start crying about this being a money grab. And there's also no reason to be asking for free le seven day login legendaries because this game is more generous about giving us accessibility to, to summons to where we can use them in the summon portal to get legendaries than the game uh, like Raid Shadow Legends is. That's, that's pretty much my two cents on this fusion. You should be able to do a free play. So get them. Get them if you can. Add them to the account. You never know where you're going to be able to use them. And if you have somebody like a soldier in, in, in uh, King Hars, he'll actually uh, be better. He'll come into play a little bit more. His ultimate will give you the additional block that you need, especially for any type of, uh, type of content. We're going to need extra block. He's going to do very well in the Codex. A lot of the top teams in the Forerunner server, when it came to the Hellfire Emperor, had this guy in its composition. So don't sleep on him. You never know what other content you might need him on. So get him if you can. And don't buy into the fear mongering that this is just a pay to win mechanic that Muntan is trying to get you to spend money in the game because it isn't. So play the game regularly. You should be able to get this guy. There were other updates that roll out here uh, that are going to be rolling out here in the Forerunner server. Of course, one of the very exciting events that people are uh, here talking about is going to be the addition of Ides, this defender that actually knocks back enemies. So a lot of them are probably going to be summoning for her to try to get her. And a lot of this is because we see her as having some applicability in GBG where she can be mightily annoying. So I'll be looking forward to that. And the other thing that I can tell you from what I saw is that, that we just uh, that we were given the notice that they're going to rework the poison heroes. And I'm wondering if this is due to the uh, to the 
to the arbiter of frost because people are using poisons to you know persistently apply the debuff to make sure you can do damage so it, it appears the cook cutter and scrief are going to have their opportunity to apply poisons from 30 percent to 20 percent for the rare 15 percent to the uncommons respectively and uh they're also their damage is going to switch from true damage to magic damage according it, it's going to last a little bit longer it's going to stack up more and apparently you can have these poisons come from different resources so if you have more than two heroes that apply poisons they can all stack up together whereas in the previous one only one could do it right so if, as soon as one applied it he was the only one that could then um stack it up so that is why you saw a lot of composition that only one poisoner was present in this case it seems to be that uh, they're going to allow multiple poisoners to now come in and have the same effect but they are reducing the chances to apply that poison so uh, until i test this we'll figure it we'll see if it's a nerf or if it's a buff first glance at it i think it's a nerf and i, I think that a lot of that had to do with the arbiter of rust so We'll see. We'll, once the changes are applied, we'll get to test that out. And because, you know, it, it was working so well, I did 60. Uh, I did 60 a cook here in the Forerunner server. So I'm wondering if we're going to get another hero reset for this. Uh, if in fact it is a nerf but we'll talk about that in another video all right folks so that'll do it for this video if you can do the fusion do it you should be able to do it for play it does seem easily accessible to anybody that plays the game regularly i'd like to thank you very much for tuning in and watching i'd like to thank you for your support and i will see you all next time on the next watch your realms video Defeat won't define me. <laughs>